Hey everyone, welcome back to FPL Fran. Today's video is going to be a slightly different video, a slightly different draft even. It's a Nomium template draft, which means no Holland and no Salah. Some people have actually requested for this because I think they're absolute mavericks and they want to go against that early Salah ownership, that early Holland ownership, and, and definitely test themselves with different captaincy options. What I do think has changed over the last few seasons is, is we now have at least three to four players and they were priced correctly this year around the sort of 9.5 to 10.5 million range that are good captaincy options when the time arises and if you have a more well-rounded team as a result of that can allow you to succeed against the more dominant sort of captaincy options within Salah and Haaland and as I said it is definitely more of a punt against the ownership um, that will be more popular at the time whether it's a combination of Salah and Haaland as well which is a pretty popular draft template but this is the Nomium draft template, and, and I've created this with the help of Fantasy Football Hub. We looked at some of the point projections that they have for some of the early game weeks. I know a lot of people are gearing still roughly towards an earlier wild card. If you're not, I do think that this draft is a little bit more room for potentially even Chelsea players. Maybe even, let's say, another Tottenham player potentially if we get a forward signing by game week one. But for the most part, this draft is targeting... Those early fixtures, maybe the first six, first five potentially, and allowing you to wildcard at a period that I, I think a lot of managers are targeting, which is around between, let's say, game weeks four to seven. Um, that's that's what I've seen from a lot of content so far. So if you have a look at Fantasy Football Hub, you can find it in the link in bio. You can get your AI team rated, and you can also have a look at some of the points projections as well for some of the advanced data. They have a really competitive offer right now, which is 50% off um, or win your mini league and get your money back as well. So have a look at the terms and conditions for that uh, and have, have a look at the link in bio. Now quickly jumping into this draft here in the defense, what I do like about the defense is it, it kind of doesn't have the compromises that some of my previous drafts had. I really love Trent and Guardiola first and foremost, just in general, as attacking players with decent fixtures. When we compare it to, let's say, Arsenal, I'd say Ben White is, is clearly a great attacking fullback. Probably not at the level as what we saw with Guardiola at the end of the season, or Trent, generally speaking. I've enjoyed watching Liverpool at the preseason. I can't see much changing in terms of how impactful Trent might be as an attacker. Bradley hasn't been that exciting, to be fair, but we also know that Trent will also get a lot of access to set pieces and things like that. And simply the fixtures are there for the taking for Liverpool players. And we have a little bit of uncertainty over Robertson to get things started with. With Guardiola, yes, you might argue that Jack Grealish coming back into the team, probably playing minutes within game weeks one and two, will make it a little bit tougher for, for Guardiola to be such an attacking asset. But at the same time, I also think given that he's going to have a strong preseason under Pep compared to some of the other defenders who are not even with the team yet, it's more than likely that Guardiola is going to keep that sort of permanence of minutes. So even if, let's say, Grealish plays himself out of the team in game week two or three, you can still have Guardiola as a key option and he can even be you know more attacking when the fixtures are good as well. As far as the third defensive main priority option, it's Pedro Porro. And I definitely have changed my mind around that, especially looking at some of the attacking data from last season and also just some of the preseason for Pedro Porro. Uh, the point projections are also really good too, which suggests that Porro is, is generally a good pick. And I, I've even done a small video in terms of my FPL top tips, having a look at the bonus impacts of Porro. He's still a very cost-efficient player, in my opinion, despite the removal of around seven bonus points if you sort of dock them off and replay last season with the bonus changes. So generally speaking, the reality is he's an extremely attacking fullback. So your, the bulk of your points is still going to come from his attacking returns, but then also, you know, if, if Spurs are ever able to get a clean sheet, that as well. As far as the defenders rounding off the draft, we have Barco. What I like about Barco is when Poro, for example, has a really tough fixture in game week four, you might have a chance of getting Barco as a starter versus Ipswich at home. And we know Estupian is coming back maybe later this month, but potentially also um, I've heard September from different reports from sort of Brighton news outlets. And that suggests that Estupian will still need time. He will need time to build up fitness, but then he will also need time to build up match fitness. And both things are things that are here he clearly is lacking with. He's not in training, for example, right now. So I do think it's very probable that Barco can actually last until game week four. Be useful then, and maybe you know you you have already served the purpose of a 4.0 defender even more so because we're starting to see that he's on set pieces, and I do really think that the upside is there. If you're not so keen on that, I do think Harwood Bellis is also just a perfectly fine option to start the season with, or you can even go with 
with someone like Wout Faze if you plan to maybe defer your wild card for a little bit longer. To start the season, I don't really mind Dan Byrne. As I said multiple times on the channel, I think that Eddie Howe shows a, a huge preference for Dan Byrne, whether left back or left center back. And I can't see that really changing at the start of the season. What is nice is when, for example, let's say Guardiola plays Chelsea away in game week one, you can just simply play Dan Byrne. And then after that, he becomes a very, very good, almost first auto sub option week to week and you don't really have to worry about having a lack of defense really you you have a strong stable first auto sub for your defender at any week and the Newcastle fixtures are generally clean they're not amazing after game week one but they're good enough where you're happy with Dan Byrne auto subbing in as far as defense and the goalkeepers I've gone for Henderson now it still seems very clear that he might be the number one to start the season for Crystal Palace in fact he finally got an assist last night when he passed to Ayu for a great goal scoring opportunity that was finished but I mostly think that you can move towards someone like Flecken if you are uncertain about someone like Henderson's minutes. I also tentatively would say that I have a preference for slightly cheaper goalkeepers because I'm hoping that they can maybe overperform their expectations. And generally speaking, I like having a cheaper keeper unless I really think someone's underpriced. Maybe Raya last season is a good example of that where he was a little bit underpriced because he was priced as a Brentford goalkeeper. Now, going back to the point with, with someone here in Henderson's uh, capacity, what I like about Henderson is Crystal Palace have been a very strong defense anyway. So this season, given that we're probably relying on clean sheets a little bit more from goalkeepers, it's nice to own at least the top five defense goalkeeper. Yes, of course, it's a huge gap away from the cities, the Arsenal's, the Liverpool's of the world's. Uh, but at 4.5, you can't really do much worse. Flecken is also really nice because I do think stylistically, we've seen that Brentford have actually allowed themselves to save a lot more opportunities than a lot of the other teams that still actually have respectable expected goals allowed. Um, so he's another alternative option that I think is quite safe. Whereas with the Chelsea goalkeeper situation, I still think it's a little bit unclear and I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen with that. So no comment there for now for me, now that Jorgensen is joined. But he is 4.5 if you are tempted. As far as the midfield, moving on to that, I've gone with without Foden. I've already explained why he's not here. The other main, main major exclusion is going to be Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer is someone that I absolutely love. I can see why a lot of people want to start the season with him, but he still has a pretty poor game week one fixture. And I would say the opening three fixtures aren't amazing for Cole Palmer. So when I compare it to, let's say, uh, Bukayo or even Hungman Sun, I do think that Saka and Sun are the two options that I would prefer starting the season off with at that sort of price point. And really, if I had to pick another option, I'd probably still pick Foden over him as a potential transfer option in game week two. If you, let's say, are not keen for whatever reason in someone like Sun, Maybe you can transfer him out to Foden. The same goes for Saka, but I, I think that these sorts of players, you can keep them for a good run. Generally speaking, Arsenal and Spurs have good fixtures between game weeks one to three. Sun is a very appetizing captaincy option in game week five if you're deciding to go for this route where you're going for no Haaland and no Salah. So he's quite good there. Saka is definitely a great captaincy option on game weeks one and three. On game week two, it's, it's another sort of Sun captaincy week if you want to see it as such. And generally speaking, that's why I think it's nice to start with these two players because they cover off captaincies quite well. Now, if you know that Foden is going to be fit and available starting versus Ipswich, then you might exercise the transfer to start. I don't tend to book transfers, but I think we'll also get a little bit more information from the Community Shield fixture. If suddenly we see Foden on the bench, uh, it might lead us to thinking that Foden will actually play in game week two. Because as a bit of a younger player, what I will say, generally speaking, from looking into Pep in the past is that he clearly respects that the younger players can play more minutes. And so when I think he talks about Walker, De Bruyne, Ruben Diaz, and Foden, that sort of general lump of players, I do think that maybe Foden is seen as a bit of a younger player and can play more. If you think about the first season when everyone thought that Haaland would suddenly be rotated here and there as a bit of a younger player, his simple response was that he's very young, shouldn't be expected to be rotating that much. Although I recognize, of course, City play a lot of fixtures at the start of the season and generally throughout. Um, but I would rather go with Saka and Son. Odegaard is an option, once again, that is a little bit more targeted towards that early wild card. I can definitely see him as being a transfer out. You can even maybe transfer him into someone like Nkunku. And then that gives you the opportunity to maybe move into the sort of price range of someone like a, a Watkins a little bit more easily. You'll have a little bit more money in the bank. Keep in mind, though, that this draft has 0 0.5 in the bank anyways. And the general book transfer that I would say that is a little bit forced might be Isak to Watkins um, at around game week three you could probably even exercise at game week four if you want to delay it by a week for whatever reason but that's generally the transfer that i've saved a little bit of money in the bank for but the the whole point of the flexibility here is that you know you're going to play around with multiple positions in the midfield and the two options in the attack will will 
allowed to be changed that that aren't Isak and and clearly when we move on to Bruno Fernandes and Eze I tend to think that right now these are picks that are really good in a lot of our game week one drafts unless of course Eze moves on to another club simply because what Eze and Bruno present are options that you don't necessarily need to mess around with as transfer options they have generally average fixtures but because they are such useful players when it comes down to owner ownership of a lot of set pieces of penalties uh, multiple things like that, permanence of minutes as well, which is really nice, uh, guaranteed starts. These are things that lead me to thinking that these players don't really need a transfer. Now, I totally accept someone might want to go Anthony Gordon instead of someone like Bruno Fernandes, and that's totally fine. Um, but for now, given that trip, you're still, as I said, at the club in Newcastle, I tentatively still like Bruno because he's got so much more going for him outside of open play compared to, let's say, someone like Gordon, which is why I do like the upgrade as it stands despite Newcastle having probably the better game week one fixture compared to, let's say, Bruno. But Fulham at home still seems like a nice fixture right now. We do think that the defense might be a little bit worse off, particularly with the Palinia cell, and we'll see how things manage going forwards. As far as the attack, I've already intonated that Isak is in the team. He's a, he's seen as an essential for many people and many an FPL manager. That is exactly the same with me. I can't see myself not having Isak in the team. And the other two options are going to be Jao Pedro and Muniz as well. Now, Jao Pedro is a little bit of a sticky situation. We actually found out yesterday that he is back in training with Brighton. So it might actually mean that we can see a bit of Jao Pedro before the preseason ends. We tend to think that he's this sort of dominant 10 option for the team and that he will start most games and also take penalties. But Jao Pedro can change in your drafts, right? If we suddenly think that because there's so much depth in Brighton, which is definitely the case, I can name probably around 10 attackers, as I might have said before in a previous video, uh, but that is a little bit concerning. And if you are concerned about that, then you have that sort of boring safe option in Armstrong, who can definitely just be a little bit of a rotation piece. If you're someone who doesn't like rotation in FPL in general, I can totally understand simply going for someone like Ross Stewart if you really want to do so but i think part of the beauty of a nomium template is that you are forcing a little bit more rotation than you would usually allow for when you have to restrict yourself with much more expensive close to perma captaincy options in holland and sala so given that you have that flexibility i do think arming yourself with rotation can actually be a benefit as opposed to a disadvantage because it means that you're going to be a little bit more flexible in terms of moving to all the non holland and sala players compared to the most and you're also going to maximize good fixtures so for example when someone like armstrong has a good fixture in gaming two or gaming five you can maximize that as far as Jao Pedro, you can maximize the generally good fixtures that Brighton have, let's say game week two, game week four, game week five as a good example. And, and, and he is still seen as an option, Jao Pedro, that is, um, who has really good fixtures to start, but so is Muniz. And, and I would definitely be starting him for most of those early fixtures regardless. So that's going to be the draft. As I said, it has 0 0.5 million in the bank. I do quite like it at be simply because I, I do enjoy rotation and I do enjoy people being Mavericks. I, as I said, I'm still clearly on either a Sala only or Holland draft in my mind. It depends on the Holland news, of course, with Pep talking about the niggles. We will find out anyways by the Community Shield what exactly is going on with Holland and how to manage that situation. Right now, to me, the, the pivot would simply to go back to a very similar Sala only structure that I had with my first draft, uh, maybe making a few changes like re reintroducing Bruno Fernandes to that team, seeing how things change there. But you can be a maverick, as I said, and, and try the Nomium draft template out. I don't think it's bad whatsoever. As I said, this is simply because over the last few years, we generally have options who are now rivaling players like Sala as captaincy options. The main thing, though, is that Someone like Salah is a little bit more of a permanent option given that Liverpool have a great run of games to start. And with Haaland, you just know that even in some of the tougher games, he's still a bit more of a premium compared to most. And that's just the reality of things. But when you have players like Isak, Saka, Son, these sorts of players, even the combination of the three, you still have the opportunity to optimize each week. And you're going to have probably less captaincy points expected, but the rest of your team is going to be stronger. So once again, when I compare it to my own drafts right now, this defense is much stronger than some of the drafts that I presented um, on defense. Goalkeeper can obviously improve. You could choose to actually spend a little bit of the money in the bank in premium goalkeepers, like let's say um, an Allison, a Raya, even if you want to sort of extend the duration of this draft. Once again, Arsenal defense, probably a team that I'd back a little bit more if I wasn't planning on wild carding. But given that I am planning on wild carding, and I think a lot of people will be too, uh, this draft doesn't feature an Arsenal defender. But a lot of things and tweaks you can find out. Have a look at the cheat sheet series. I'll definitely create an updated version of that as we head closer towards the final deadline for game week one. But thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I'll see you guys soon.